What's up everybody? Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'm going to be talking about the one thing that you are probably messing up in your training and messing up really bad if you are not doing this right. Then you are wasting your time. Then you should not be doing it at all. However, this is an integral part. It should be an integral part of any comprehensive training program because it provides a lot of advantages. It is called SMR self myofascial release otherwise known as foam rolling. So let's move on to see how we can use SMR on different muscle groups and what the advantages of it are. Why you should be doing it at all because you need to be doing it. It is critical. So what is self myofascial release? Essentially it's a stretching technique that focuses on the neurosystems and the facial systems of the body or the fibrous tissue that surrounds and separates muscle tissue by applying gentle force as you do with a foam roller. By applying gentle force to an adhesion or the knot, the elastic muscle fibers are altered from a bundle position because they're bundled up, which that bundling causes the actual adhesion into a straighter alignment with the direction of the muscle or fascia. That's why you roll along the lines of the muscle. This gentle pressure applied with implements such as foam roll, whether it's smoother foam rolls like the one I'm using here or rough foam, roll, foam rolls, which you can see on Amazon, which have glowing reviews, and people say that they really help because essentially they're they're digging harder into your muscles to break out those adhesions. Well, those, this gentle pressure will stimulate the Golgi tendon organ and create that autogenic inhibition. It'll decrease that muscle spindle excitation and release hypertonicity, which is essentially tension of the underlying musculature. In other words, the gentle pressure, which is similar to a massage, which is why we like it so much, because it's breaking up all those knots, and that's why you hear that cracking. And the cracking kind of really feels good, doesn't it? This gentle pressure, which is similar to a massage, breaks out those knots within the muscle and helps to release that unwanted muscular tension. It is very important to note. It is very important to note that when a person is using self myofascial release, he or she must find a tender spot. You must find a tender spot which indicates that presence of muscle hypertonicity and sustain that pressure on that spot for a minimum of 30 seconds. And this is the thing that most of us get wrong. We just do it for a couple of seconds and think, oh, we found that discomfort. Now the foam rollers rolled over it. And even if it rolls over it for a couple of seconds, we're done. We're good. No, because you need at least 30 seconds to try to break up that hypertonicity, break up that tension, fix those adhesions, fix that bundle position into a more straighter alignment along the muscle uh, lines. So you must do it for a minimum of 30 seconds and this will increase the Golgi tendon, tendon organ activity and decrease that muscle spindle activity, thus triggering the autogenic inhibition response. It may take a little longer depending on how sore you are and it may take a little longer depending on how you are able to relax. If you are tense, then it's going to be a little harder. It's going to take a little longer. But if you are able to relax, then it will be faster. This process will help restore your body back to its optimal level of function by resetting the proprioceptive mechanisms of the soft tissue. You should SMR before stretching. You should SMR before stretching and you should SMR after cool down. Uh, during cool down, sorry. So warm up and cool down are very critical parts of your workout because they essentially help set you up one and then help restore you to your normal function functionality. So during the warm up, you SMR before stretching so that your muscles are able to lengthen through the stretching techniques. And when, for example, when you're lifting heavy, when you're doing squats, when you're doing chest press, you need to be able to lengthen, you need to be able to extend all the way in whatever capacity. And if you are not, then you run the risk of injury. That You run the risk of injuring yourself. And we all know how bad squat injuries, how bad chest press injuries can get. How bad... Oops, sorry. We all know how bad deadlift injuries can get. So you need to be able to foam roll properly to do that hyper... Release that hypertonicity, break those knots, and just be able to lengthen properly. Doesn't that sound kind of good to be able to lengthen properly the way a human being should? And for cool down, you should be able to do it because essentially when you're when you're lifting, you're forming these knots, you're forming these adhesions because you're doing heavy lifting work. And or even if it's not heavy, even if it's proprioceptively challenging, even if it's in unstable and controlled environments, then you are essentially building up those knots. So if you foam roll right after right after you lift during your cool down, then you're essentially helping reset your body to its normal proprioceptive mechanisms. Hope that made sense. Hope you had fun watching. Um, essentially, what I've done so far is foam roll my hamstrings in front of you, foam roll my quadriceps in front of you. Uh, I'm currently in the process of foam rolling my quadriceps. Next, we will have my thoracic spine, which is essentially the back. Never, by the way, never foam roll your lower back because if you foam roll your lower back, like it, 
it, it runs the risk of injury so you should not be doing that essentially all of your weight comes on your lower back and your lower back is most of the time not able to support that you shouldn't be foam rolling it at all um thoracic spine i've done hands i've done quadriceps i've done and i'll move on to chest next which obviously a lot of people want to do because you want to be able to lengthen properly during your chest rest during your chest uh, exercises and i think that should be it if obviously you can uh foam roll the the other muscles for example your peroneals which are essentially the side muscle to the the, the calves and you can foam roll your calves which you probably should because walking around really seems to take a lot out of our calves at least mine um i hope that helped i hope that was useful leave a like down below comment subscribe comment if you found it useful subscribe for more future content i'll try to bring the best that i can and i hope you found that useful and hope that you will use it in your training Thank you so much for watching. Now you can enjoy the rest of my foam rolling experience. Or um, you can go check out my other videos. I'll start playing some nice music after this. So if you want to keep on watching the remaining 40 or so seconds, you're welcome to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for following. I'll see you next time. Take care.